usually Asian Asian people have have high tolerance for spice. Really? Usually, the, yeah, uh, yeah, Chinese, like, Chinese, like Chinese, Chinese, Chinese food, Indian, Koreans. Okay. They go crazy, yeah. Yeah, Filipino <laughs> too. Filipinos, that's cap. I've never met a Filipino that can handle spice. Yeah, uh, yes, <laughs> very scappy. Hey everyone, and welcome back to the ArtCast podcast. My name is Didi Mark, and I am here with my co-host, Third PHP. And you probably read it in the title already, but we have a very special guest today. If you haven't heard of him, my God, I'm gonna be genuinely surprised. He's written like everything you probably love. It's Brandon Chan. Brandon, how you doing today? I'm doing doing fantastic. How about yourself? <laughs> I'm doing great. How are you, Third? Doing. Do, I'm. 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 I'm wide awake. <laughs> He's wide awake. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah, something. yeah. I just, I, I just woke up. Let's go. I'm ready to, awesome. I'm ready to do this. Mm-hmm. That's something. Yeah. So, um, we were kind of talking before we started, like recording, recording. And I said I already had a lot of stuff that I was gonna ask Brandon personally because I'm just a curious, curious person. Before I jump straight in and start like grilling Brandon, almost like an interview, sort of. Don't worry, I'll be nice. Um, did anybody have anything they wanted to get off their chest or say really quick? Get off my chest. Oh mm. man. Hot take. Um, go ahead. Hot take. Yes. Let's, let's I don't go. know if it's a hot. There is no hot take. I don't know. I'm having a, a kimchi <laughs> craze right now. I'm, I was eating mm-hmm. some kimchi. Ooh. That's what I I'm thinking kimchi. about. I love kimchi. That was random. As, that was random. Very random. But you asked. No, no. Yeah. It's welcome here. It's welcome here. <laughs> are, you, are you a spicy person, bro? Personally, uh, I like spicy food, but I, I, I'm, I'm, I can't tolerate spice. <laughs> I have zero spice tolerance actually, because mm. when I was younger, uh, my dermatologist was like. Spicy food's bad for your skin. Drink water, eat bland food. So I did that, oh. and then I went to college. Oh, wow. I, I I went to college with good skin, but then uh, was like, yo, time to eat some spicy food. Now I have no tolerance, but I love it. You know, it's really good. So Yeah, yeah. I love spicy food. I have mad high tolerance. I, I'm African, man. I can eat, I can eat the spiciest things. Oh, um, really? I don't know. Usually, yeah. Asian Asian people have, have high tolerance for spice. Really? Usually... The, yeah, yeah right. Chinese, like Chinese, Chinese like Indian, food, Koreans, okay. they go crazy, yeah. Yeah, Filipino <laughs> too. Filipinos, that's cap. I've never met a Filipino that can handle spice. Yeah, wow. yes. <laughs> maybe, like, maybe like Thai, Thai, yeah. Yeah, Thai, Thai people can handle their spice. Okay, I know that one. Korean, Korean though, Korean, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I've never, I don't think I actually know any Koreans. That's crazy. Anyways, that's um, crazy. That's crazy. Is, is it that crazy? I think I think it's pretty crazy that I thought they were pretty common, especially here in the U.S. But yeah, uh, let's jump right into it because I'm just really excited. And Brandon is a very busy guy. He doesn't have a lot of like spare spare time. Um, Jeez. So yeah, so really quick, just in case for some ungodly reason that somebody doesn't know you who's listening right now, Brandon, can you briefly introduce yourself? Like, uh, who are you? What do you do? Um, yeah, I'm Brandon. I am a full-time author in the manga mm. and webtoon space. I also write for some like anime type video games. I'm also a novelist, past tense novelist, because I've shifted from doing novels to mostly like uh, Eastern style comics. Um, I also post videos on the internet about my projects, about the general entertainment industry. Um, usually focused on kind of like eastern entertainment so like japanese or korean or chinese uh mm-hmm. stuff but that's all in the u.s now so you know it's really popping here so yeah, yeah. that's all i do <laughs> just make uh, yeah, story, make and sell, make and sell stories mm-hmm. that's pretty yeah. inter- that's really interesting uh third you're about to say something yeah i was just i was just um about to say like uh brandon's work ethic is something else especially oh, yeah. when i first met you brandon do you remember the 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 time when you grinded on TikTok and wrote a lot too at the same time? I think I think you posted three to four videos a day for a whole year, right? Yeah, there yeah. was a time Brandon was cranking out TikToks. I remember that. I, remember I was that going time. I was going nuts. The quality of the videos was really garbage though. So guys, don't give me too much credit. It's just definitely a quantity over quality time of my life. But um, it got you to a million yeah. though, so that 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 counts for something, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So yeah, I mean. Yeah. I, I always I recommend when people are making content, like especially starting out when you don't know how to reach like what quality is, mm-hmm. is to just pump pump videos because then you just like it doesn't really matter. Like these videos don't matter, right? So I honestly mm-hmm. say, recommend that for, for anyone listening who's a who wants to be a content creator or an artist that wants to put mm-hmm. out their work more, just pump, just pump. Honestly, that's a good that's a good advice because yeah, a lot always of always experiment. Yeah, yeah, 
No, no, no problem, no problem. Because uh, we always tell people to, uh, people, people ask how to grow on social media. We say, uh, put out good quality content consistently. And the question that always comes next is, how do I know if my work is quality? And that kind of, that's kind of where things get murky. And I think that's where your advice kind of fits in. Like when you don't really know what quality is, or like you feel like you're not at a level where you can put out quality, I think you are right. It might just be quantity you want to go for, because eventually when you keep putting the work out there, you like over time, you kind of have this click in your head of, Oh, so this is how you do it and eventually it'll go from like a lot of mid content to like you start putting out stuff that's really genuinely good and i think that's exactly really advice. Um, yep. um so yeah brandon you you talked briefly sort of about how you uh you know you write you used to write novels and now you're doing like eastern type stuff and i kind of wanted yeah. to ask how did you get into writing like as in depth as you want to go in or as in depth as you can and you know i have a lot more yeah. questions so maybe maybe not talk too in depth but talk about your beginning and how you got where you are now. Because personally, I've been following you for a while and you always talk about yeah. uh, your story. It's very inspiring to me. You used to be like this bookworm and I believe you got a job in the finance industry, uh, which yeah. is crazy. And then you like quit it to like pursue this. Some anime pr protagonist types like story is what you have. I want to hear about <laughs> that a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, when I was growing up, I was uh, pretty obsessed with like manga. My first manga I ever got was like pretty young. I was like five or something. My mom got me Dragon Ball from the library. Mm. She thought I was wholesome, but guess what? Volume one, first boobies I ever saw, uh, Bulma, <laughs> my first chapter. It was like, wow, yeah. I'm five. This is kind of crazy. Bulma's trying to seduce <laughs> Goku. And I was like, little Goku, like, what is that? Um, <clears throat> But um, yeah, I got obsessed with manga pretty early on. So I was like that kid in kindergarten um, yeah. that would draw his own manga and I would print it using my printer or like scan mm -hmm. it, print uh, copies and try and like create my own mini Shonen Jump for kids uh, mm -hmm. at school. Mm -hmm. And that was that was what I did in like elementary school. Middle wow. school, I started writing novels, like not novels, but like uh, writing like in my notebook, like uh, fan fictions. I used to write like mm -hmm. I used to read a lot. So like Harry Potter, all that stuff, writing fan fictions. Yeah. Um, and then my grandma, who was a really big creative, really uh, inspired me to do more original content. Mm -hmm. So, of course, I didn't start off with original content. Do you guys know Kingdom Hearts or no? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Kingdom Hearts. For those of you guys who don't know Kingdom Hearts, Kingdom Hearts is like there's a, an original character who jumps into like characters that are uh, worlds that already exist, like in the Disney yeah. IP space. Yeah. And so I used to do this thing where I created an original character and had him jump into different worlds. Um in uh like naruto dragon ball and they would like interact with them and that's how i started writing and getting involved that's in that mm -hmm. and then i started actually doing art i used to be an artist uh um mm -hmm. back uh like maybe in middle school to high school i was doing mostly art um mm -hmm. and then i think i when i was in a freshman in high school was when i decided like okay i can only i'm probably only going to be good at one because i'm doing all this stuff <laughs> at school Got yeah. really rough Asian parents. They're gonna. They oh, yeah. have like X amount of time to, in a day. I'm only gonna be good at one of these things, like realistically. Mm -hmm. yeah. So which one do I yeah. do? So I flipped a coin, um, and the, to decide whether I would be a writer or an artist. Did you really um, flip an actual coin, or you just flipped that a coin? I flipped a coin. Oh my there goodness! Was a, there, there was this a is coin. an anime. So, so, <laughs> so there, was, there was a. Bean. There was a there, life. There would, sorry, yeah. sorry. There would have been like a universe where you, you were called inspired artist yeah that's that's, crazy. That's, that's, that's that's potential there so i yeah there was a, a world where i was only an artist i had an art instagram and everything i gave it up to to do only writing and then i pursued a, a novel that i put on like wattpad or something that was like a mm -hmm. different website than it is today at the time yeah. when i was 14 and it got like a lot of readers and so then eventually i ended up publishing it when i was 17 as a novelist mm -hmm. um wow and uh, yeah, that was my writing journey and kept writing uh, all the way mm -hmm. up to today. So yeah, I mean, I've been mm -hmm. writing and creating stories most of my existence, but um, mm -hmm. yeah, I didn't publish until I was 17, I think. <laughs> and I'm 25 now, so. Wow, that's that's, that's inspiring. It. Inspired author, yeah. there you go. Inspired that author. Is, <laughs> interesting. I, I, also, I also like the idea when you said you created a character that jumps into universes. So it's like you don't you don't have to do the world building. You just you you can just you know develop the character in that um, universe. Yeah, it's a good way to write, I guess. I think it's good practice, honestly, because like one, yeah. I have to I have to write a character that already exists, so it has to be semi accurate to what someone else already created. So I'm doing my own little take. It's kind of like acting, right? It's yeah. like 
I'm pretending that I know this character when I'm it's someone else's creation. And then I have my own character that I can kind of do whatever I want with, right? And so it's kind of like this weird balance where that's a good practice. Like honestly, fan fiction guys, easiest mm -hmm. way to develop your writing because you're working with what the building block blocks else already has. Um, and then mm -hmm. you kind of like iterate. And it's kind of like art too. I think a lot of artists start off doing yeah, like yeah. fan art, right? It's like you do fan art, oh, yeah. you learn composition, yeah. and then you and then you shift over to like, all right, like I want to start doing mm -hmm. my own characters. So, yeah. Yeah, that's that's very interesting to hear. And uh, you sort of brought up your um your your grandma and how she kind of like push you to do original stuff. So that's kind of like a I like to think of it. That's like a point in your life where you kind of made this pivot to like you know in terms of leading you closer and closer career that you currently have right now um i want to know about another pivot which is like what happened with you in the world of like finance you know yeah like what what led you to to just taking that insane leap and just quitting because it must have been like a really deep like you must have had like such strong feelings to really take that you know leap of faith i want to hear about that yeah yeah i'm actually a pretty risk averse person so i wouldn't have made the mm -hmm. jump unless i knew i was gonna work out yeah um but yeah i mean i always tell people this like you know if you're 20 in your 20s mm -hmm. and you have something that you're really passionate about and there, you have a chance to make mm -hmm. a living and survive off of that thing and you could be okay doing that thing for the rest of your life and yeah. go for it right because if you don't it doesn't work out you still have time to clean it up clean up the mess mm -hmm. um and, and honestly like I, I always see people that are in their 20s and they're always like i don't know if this is i don't oh, know yeah. if i can take the risk i don't know if i can do that it's like Unless you have like a trillion dollars, a bunch of like loan student loans or loans, mm -hmm. or you have a kid or all this stuff, like most 20 year olds, a lot of 20 year olds like are not, you know, have minimal liabilities compared to like, you know, oh, yeah. what they will have in, at the age of 30, 40, because like your liabilities only build up as you continue to get older. So mm -hmm. <laughs> I would say like, you know, the younger you are, the easier it is to get, you know, easier it is to jump into that thing. But um, mm -hmm. yeah, so I was in finance. I studied at NYU for economics and uh, computer science um, yeah. and uh, went into, <laughs> thank you, and then went into, uh, yeah, fi I went into a finance tech job. So like mm -hmm. I was in like. I was like working for banks, but I was more in like a data science like type role. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, yeah, I mean, I was like, it was pretty, it was pretty crappy to be honest. I was working like that's why I can do what I do. There at the beginning was like, yeah, dude, I appreciate like you know you, you have strong work ethic. Mm -hmm. It's it's strong it's strong work ethic, but it's also like I have a high pain tolerance. You know, imagine mm -hmm. doing the same mm -hmm. thing the same hours, except yeah. you do something that you hate. You hate. So yeah. this yeah. compared to that is like nothing. So honestly, I could mm -hmm. do this forever and it'd be fine. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I mean, I, I I was pretty much you know working like eighty hour weeks, working some weekends, um, mm -hmm. and having minimal time to really write, uh, which kind of sucked. And then the pandemic hit, mm -hmm. and that really allowed for me to uh, start writing remotely. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I was like writing remotely, and then that's when I started to build up a following. Obviously, I met Third during that time. We were starting to build God Game together, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, I think that was kind of what started to snowball like a lot of stuff. Like obviously, um, it was my first like real serialization, I would say, uh, in the comic space. And then Third, I think was it yours as well? Or... Yes, it was my first ever yeah. professional mm -hmm. job as well. Yeah. yeah so we were we were we were experiencing this this new thing together um and then it kind of like jump started i'm sure like a lot of new opportunities and new things that are now you know a couple of years later how many years two one two yeah, almost, two years almost, yeah it's gonna be three years in january it's gonna be three years oh my god dude what is going on <laughs> man yeah. it's been that long already that's crazy yeah uh -huh. It's gonna okay. be our third year third. <laughs> no, <laughs> <laughs> that actually genuinely made me laugh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. Brandon, you said a lot of stuff, a lot of good stuff there. Man, I don't know where to I don't know where to start with that. I think I right, think that's content, you, dude. Yeah, that's content <laughs> right there. I was just about to say you you touched on the the if you're in your twenties, man, I am such a big believer in that. And it's why I do what I do, because like you mm. said, the liability like the liabilities right now, they're not that much. Like I feel like your twenties are the time to really like do what it is that you love because i always tell people like i feel like people don't realize that we only have like one life if there's one thing you want mm -hmm. to go after it and so i like that you brought that up that was really interesting um but before i move on third did you want to say something else 
No, no, I'm, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. So, Brandon, you mentioned working with Third. You know, Third has told us the story multiple times. And also, I'm going to point out the pattern here. Third, have you noticed that our last three like guests, who are all pretty, like, I would say, really, really good at what they do, it all seemed like it seemed like the pandemic was just really a pivotal moment for a lot of <clears throat> creatives, isn't it? I feel like yeah, it's yeah. always the pandemic that gets yeah. things going for them. But anyways, you mentioned you've been working with Third for almost three years now, and most people know Third PHP just as much as they know, you know, Brandon. But they also know, um, like, tell me if I'm pronouncing his name wrong. Is it Omer? Is that his name? Omer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah so that's like. Yeah. I imagine him as sort of like your, um, like if you watch the anime Bakuman, he's like the the Mashiro to your, <laughs> to your yeah. uh, get, forget to the guy's name. Um, how did you guys Takagi? There you go. I, how did you guys meet? And like, yeah, yeah. Just kind of tell us how did you guys meet? Because a lot of people are always curious of how you know they're writers and they want to hire an uh, an artist. You know what I mean? Or they want an artist to work with them, and maybe they don't even necessarily want to pay. So like, you know, tell us about how did you meet Umer? Because he's a he's an amazing artist. I would like to have yeah. him on. Yeah, so Mayor, yeah, if you want to get him on, let me know. I, I it's, We're homies. Um, so yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, I've known him since I was like, what? Like, I've known him for maybe over seven years now. And mm -hmm. he and I, I think we met in college. He, remotely, obviously, I, I messaged him because I was a, mm -hmm. a writer in the space and he was an early like manga artist or he did mostly illustration, but was interested in manga. And I was mm -hmm. interested in manga. So we were like, hey, why don't we like do a little tester? You know, I I, I had just done like mostly Western, so like a more American comics, but I, my heart mm -hmm. was in manga. So I was like, okay, I would love to. Usually, you know, good partnerships usually, um, unless they like trust your, trust you already. You know, it mm -hmm. usually ends up with you, starts off with you hiring them. So I hired him. Oh yeah. To do some manga pages, uh, just to see what it was like, and then, uh, you know, as we started to build that relationship, I think we we kept in touch over the years and. Yeah, now, you know, we entered a uh, Shonen Jump Tezuka together. We did like, oh, yeah. the manga together. Like, we're uh, doing a lot of stuff, like, behind the scenes that I can't announce. But, um, mm -hmm. yeah, just, like, a lot of cool stuff. And, uh, yeah, I mean, like, you know, it starts off, you know, sometimes as, like, you know, you hire someone and then that develop, you know, obviously through the hardship of grinding your ass off. Mm -hmm. oh, it, yeah. ends up, it ends up becoming more of a friendship than, you know, than, uh, That's nice. That's than just, you know, someone you're hiring. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's 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 nice to hear. Um, third, did you have anything to add to that? Yeah, I mean, I I, I, would, I just wanted to say that um, I think though the the Tezuk event thing that's where most people discover you, especially. Mm. Oh yeah, uh, yeah, especially for the new artists. Not only artists, actually, authors too. My, mm -hmm. I remember my, like getting in a call with like ten friends, uh, ten mutual artist friends of mine. Mm -hmm. And we were like looking at the um, the entries for Tezuka, mm -hmm. um, you know, event, and we saw your thing, and I was like, "Bro, I'm a I'm a huge fan right now." Yeah, my These jaw dropped when I saw that. Are the yeah. real fucking deal? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, my jaw dropped when I saw that. I remember. Um, yeah, yeah. Icarus Rising was a was an interesting. It was actually my first one shot ever. So actually, really? I think it's actually it's just okay. <laughs> so when people were like, "Wow, we really liked it," I was like, "It's just okay," because I think I could do a lot better after that. Um, <laughs> so honestly, like honestly, I'll tell you what the flaws of Icarus Rising were. You know, it won it won a Kyoto Manga Competition Award, but like honestly, like I think Umer was carrying me super hard. Like honestly, his art was insane. Um, he was going crazy on it. I think. The concept was really good because I'm a big Greek mythology guy. Third obviously knows because that's God game. Um, <laughs> but um, Greek mythology, like, so I wanted to do the story based on, you know, Icarus and the sun, which is a really, you know, kind of niche, but not really niche because everyone kind of like knows it, but doesn't yeah. know it. Mm -hmm. And you can do a nice little twist, right? So I want to do a nice twist on Icarus and the sun. But I think I picked too big of a of a concept because the re the problem was that when you build a one shot, like you want like a really self contained story. Mm -hmm. The story I was telling was like almost like a first chapter, um, mm -hmm. and the concept was way too big. It was like it, and I and I learned from that experience. And people who are listening, here's a key key advice in one sentence: It's way easier to expand a idea than it is to condense an idea. Ooh. I'll repeat that. It's I way that easier down. to write expand. It down. <laughs> it's <laughs> write it down. Expand an idea so easy. So if you want to make Naruto, like as long as you want, it's so much easier to make Naruto a thousand billion chapters and keep adding new ideas onto it than it is 
to like try and tell the entire uh, Shinobi arc or whatever mm -hmm. in 50 chapters. And because it's just, it's just way That's harder. Wrong. It's ho way harder to condense it. It's just, if you want to add new things, you can always add new things. You can always innovate and make your story better, but to make something to take a big idea that's like too mm -hmm. big and stack it into 55 pages and, and try and have it be finished yeah. so hard yeah um, that's so i think amazing. i could have gone smaller with the idea yeah amazing but i could go on a t-shirt right there that quote that you said that could go on a t-shirt um <laughs> that, leads, that leads me to my, my next question is do you know so when you when you have a story as like for example if it's a series do you know how many chapters or like uh volumes it would take to complete the story like do you know that or do you just write and you know you just make your conclusion and it takes as many chapters as it needs to take um it really depends on who you're working with so like voice me full transparency they don't they don't give me a amount of chapters that i need to finish the story in so i can do whatever i want it's kind of okay. like shonen jump like oh you'll need to finish this in the x amount which is awesome i actually like that that model yeah. because i can expand or unexpand or mm -hmm. see what the readers are thinking see what they like change adjusting uh, accordingly the mm -hmm. downside to something like that is if one day they told me like hey brandon this isn't working we need to cut you all cut the series mm -hmm. i would have to find out a way to wrap it up in like X it's like it's like it. getting canceled it's like getting canceled and mm -hmm. uh that's that's like the the tough thing about doing that model webtoon <laughs> webtoon is different because if you're doing a webtoon original you pitch season by season so Ooh. when you're pitching you it's like tv like i know that it's going to end in this or we're going to get this season of, mm -hmm. of x amount of episodes let's say 50 episodes uh for this first season um with some leeway so if you have to go to 55 no big deal um uh, that in that case you have to have the entire thing planned out and it's hard to deviate from that um so on one hand it's predictable like what like from their side like oh this is how many episodes we're gonna have this is what's gonna happen but on the other hand like from an artistic standpoint creator standpoint if i change my mind within that year of serialization uh it's harder to do that um it's harder to expand it's harder to change anything because you're only green lit for x amount of chapters um so that though it's the it's the benefit the there's a benefit and cost i guess each model but yeah I, I i personally like the flexibility of the of voice me because it's just like i could just do what i i could just like change my mind like halfway through the series and be like okay like mm -hmm. kind of like what i did with third when third drew this character his name's yoon in like chapter two of god game i had no intention of making him an actual character and then i turned him into a main character because First off, third designed him so well, and then second off, like people really liked him, even though he was just like a side character. <laughs> you're yeah. welcome. <laughs> um, and like I can't do that for like uh, something where, you know, you're already like planning out your entire series, right? Uh, it's hard to to make that adjustment because um, you, you know, there will be ripple effects of that change throughout your series. Yeah, yeah that's true. That's you made true. him badass as fuck. Now he's like my favorite. <laughs> Yeah. yeah very this is so far a really educational episode and i'm i'm really with it i'm learning a lot and um i guess i want to learn a little more because you spoke you touched uh a little bit about webtoon and i'm currently aware yeah. of your i guess the newest in your many many batch of series and i mean that as respectfully as possible because i respect that but um a stray goblin i believe is the name i want to know just a goblin yeah just yeah. a goblin I, i'm sorry i mixed it up with shogun we had it last time my bad just a okay. goblin so how did that become a webtoon original you, you mentioned pitching is that how you did this one or did they approach you yeah i met this guy jks manga um and he i guess like so he's an author with um a lot mm. of readers but he doesn't have like a strong like social media following and that's been, a lot of authors and artists like struggle oh, yeah. with social media which i get i get it's like hard to put your face on the camera and stuff um it's hard to like put your voice out there and if you want to be anonymous like it's extra hard to 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 you know get a following so uh he reached out to me and he's like the number one like author on web novel super famous like web novel author mm -hmm. he was like yo dude you want to make a series with me um for webtoon um so he actually had the connection okay I webtoon see. initially <clears throat> and so when we pitched to webtoon it was actually interesting because uh the editor that he pitched to actually knew me already from shonen jump tazuka oh. from from mm -hmm. other series as well and she was like yeah do you have anything else that you want to pitch um so it started off with me him introducing me to the editor mm -hmm. and then the editor 
knew me already and she was like actually i want more stuff from you wow. and so i have a couple other series that are also lined up for for webtoon as well oh, man yeah yeah i think Samurai is coming out in december it was going to be november where we want more buffer so december, have you announced yeah. this before previously yeah i have yeah. okay okay well, it was very it was very low key though low oh key, yeah though. i definitely missed it because i now. usually on top of all that wow yeah yeah well, yeah that's that's Man, okay, we'll get to we'll get to your the work that you've done in the past and possibly what you might have planned in the future. We'll get there. But I wanted to know, you know, keeping in line with the educational vibe of this episode, which I really personally like a lot. Can you briefly talk about your process when it comes to writing? Essentially, just for the people who might be listening, as briefly as you can, or you want to go in a little more depth, that's fine. Talk about, you know, t essentially teach how to write a story, you know? Oh, my <laughs> process. I think wow I, I could I, I have like a class that teaches this pretty much i actually wanted to do mm -hmm. like a webtoon writing class because i have a i have a writing class for manga um but i, th I feel like webtoon uh is a little bit different because it's more uh bite-sized than, than manga a mm -hmm. little bit which is interesting but i do want to i do want to um, like but <laughs> yeah sale? i mean the manga class yeah it's like this weird it's just like this class i did during the pandemic i want to update it so uh but yeah it's a it's a class it's actually pretty inf informational but i'll give you the the breakdown right like i would say you want to start off what a lot of people a lot of early writers their issue is that they do too oh, much yes. and start before um oh, yeah. before they know so i would say like you want to start off with just like a really strong mm -hmm. log line like you know like i don't know I, I don't have a strong log line off the top of my head but your log line should be like really powerful and really unique and someone should be able to look at it and be like all right i know exactly like what this story is about mm -hmm. what makes it different and it interests me um yeah. in that one sentence if you can do that in that <clears throat> in that one sentence like i said it's easier to expand than to condense so you can take that and then you can start like, expanding it like all right what, now i have a summary. what's log yeah line? go ahead yeah a log line is a is a is it basically like, like uh, a, one, when you're pitching yeah sorry go ahead. i was i was because i, I yeah. thought i knew what it was but isn't it like a like a one sentence type summary or something yeah it's basically like the one sentence one to, or two mm -hmm. to three sentences or one to three sentences That's fine, it, matter, yeah. uh, it doesn't really matter but it's a really short mm -hmm. condensed version of your okay. entire series <clears throat> So like God, when I sometimes when I promote God game, it's like what I don't actually know the exact mm -hmm. words that I use. I might be butchering it right now, but it's essentially like God puts two million souls from across history into a death game where no no one has their memories, and they fight to discover like to uncover their memories and discover why wow. they want to live. Right. So like that's like two sentences, but like that's pretty much the whole plot, right? In like two sentences. Um, and obviously there's more to it, mm -hmm. and you can expand on that. But like when you're pitching, it's like that's like what it hook, is right it? apparently it's like, um, a, like the, the hook mm -hmm. yeah exactly yeah it's like it's like a hook yeah, yeah. But with the whole summary right so i would say like start with that if your like mm -hmm. log line is really strong like run that by people like oh does this seem that's interesting does this seem interesting that's so good right so yeah like just a goblin is probably like um an inventor mm -hmm. goblin tries to discover why adventurers are trying to kill his kind mm -hmm. or something yeah. like that right like something like that so it's like uh yeah what what makes it different what is the whole plot about mm -hmm. one sentence um so let's start, start off with a log line expand the summary and then eventually like you build kind of like a pitch for yourself so like okay what is what is the log line genre title mm -hmm. summary of the, the series like summary is like a paragraph character descriptions like okay what is either each character going mm -hmm. through and then what's their arc um <clears throat> it's a good exercise and then you can actually think about like whether or not this is something worth like writing and usually for writers like uh we have to like pitch it to people so like <laughs> you know usually it's like oh i need to get a series pick no. picked up or something right so it doesn't even so i won't actually even write like any of the series until um like it's greenlit by mm -hmm. like, the publisher honestly so from there i know and then my process from there is like if i'm writing for webtoon i'll plan out the whole series the whole season so i'll write in bullet notes what goes into every single episode mm -hmm. like story beats um and uh you know i'll write the chapters according to those episode wow. beats for god game <clears throat> for god game it's a little different it's all just in my, in my head and this is because i'm a novelist and i'm able to do this so maybe it's not the best writing process mm -hmm. for everyone but uh, i already know kind of what's going to happen generally and so every chapter i kind of just wait i kind of like just wing it though like actually like i'm just like okay i kind of know like where mm -hmm. i left off before i know where i'm going 
I'm just gonna like let all the writing unfold on its own and I just like write the chapter. Um, so it, it's two different ways of writing. One, I'm following a structure because that's the structured path they want. And then the other one is like more chaotic. I don't really know what's gonna, the chapter even looks like um, it's done. until it's done. But that's not, that's not bad it. though. I, I kind of like yeah. that, that, that way, especially cause I feel like as an as a writer, you kind of need to know yourself and from based on how you talk and based on the really good information you've given so far, it seems like I would be able to like mm -hmm. trust when you say that you can do that because you seem to know what you're doing. You know what I mean? Like you can definitely just, you already have the story in your head and you kind of just let it unfold. Yeah. 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 Um, I was, uh, Brendan, sorry. Yeah. I, think, I have a question. Um, mm -hmm. For yeah. God game, how often do you edit the episode if you like edit it at all? Um, I will write the episode. I will take a break like for a couple hours and I'll go back. I'll read it again. I'll edit it and then I'll send it to you guys, like yeah. to the team. And then I'll be like, okay. And then like the team will review it and then I'll go back like the next day, maybe in the morning and like read it again. I'll do like two rounds of edits, but serialized. We are serialized. So I don't have time yeah. to like really wait for two, like really like spend yeah, forever on it. Right. It's just like how it is. So I will, I will probably spend at max, like, like do two, two to three rounds of edits. Like, but if sometimes I nail it, sometimes I'm like, I'm not yeah. touching a thing. Yeah. Yeah. Sick. Um, this was sick. And also like, but the thing is like, also like for a writer, it's also kind of <laughs> serialized writing is kind of way easier than like, you know, cause it's like, if I catch mm -hmm. something, I'll also see it like in the storyboard phase. Like if, if I fucked up, like, like I kind of have like a second wind and it kind of sucks for the storyboard artist, but like I have a second wind cause I can like see like the sketch, like, mm -hmm. oh shit. Like that didn't come out how I pictured it in my brain. Right. And that's just like, it's just hard. Cause like, unless I store, like for manga, I'll storyboard uh, for, mm -hmm. for Umer, right? I'll storyboard like the manga for him. So I kind of know like what's going to happen for webtoons. Like the process, like rarely will a writer like have to store mm -hmm. like storyboard. Also because my storyboards suck. Like they're just like <laughs> disgusting. Um, so third probably would not want to see it. Honestly, I give him a lot of reference, you know, I give him references instead, but uh, yeah, I would say like, you know, it's easier to see like, yeah, the storyboard is the second win for a writer. Like you can see like whether or not it's gonna, it's, it works, the script works, translates well. I, I already saw it. I, I remember you sending me some storyboards of yours and Umair's version. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of, yeah, kind of crazy. Oh. I still remember. Oh. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm always impressed by how, uh, <clears throat> how he's able to adapt my terrible <laughs> angles to... Sometimes I can't even do like a three fourth shot. I'm like, I don't really know how to do this anymore. Mm -hmm. So just like, I will just write like three four. Oh man, <laughs> I so want to see. Or like, I so want to see shot. a Brandon style yeah, art so. style one day. I want to oh see that too. Oh my god, I don't even know. I probably have some old some old art lying okay. around somewhere. Uh, so yeah, um, man, I was gonna ask. Oh yeah, uh, Brandon. So would you say, uh, since you do serialized work, would you say that you're I like to call myself a master of it's good enough where you really don't have time to be really trying to get perfection. Would you say, would you say that's kind of how you kind of operate or you just happen to just nail it all the time or you actually strive to make sure everything is perfect? <laughs> I don't, I don't strive mm -hmm. for perfection by any means. I think perfection is like, like, what does that that's mean? True. Right. If you spend like 20, if you spend 20 years on something and someone's going to think that it's not that perfect anyway. So I strive for the for the mm -hmm. highest quality that I can do in a lot of time, and I'm okay with that. But I also know that I'm always getting better. So like something that I created like two, three years ago, maybe I can do it better now. But I also wouldn't be where I am now without having done those things. So I'm kind of like okay, I'm very with wise, that, you know. Yeah. It's kind of like when you look at like Bleach, the art style mm -hmm. from Bleach, early oh, phase, yeah. right? Dude, completely different from his current art style, TJ Kubo, freaking Got insane yeah. now. Not saying he wasn't he wasn't amazing mm -hmm. at the beginning. Same with Naruto. They're all just very different. And like those are the building blocks that you end up leading. So it's hard to I think it's impossible to serialize, honestly, if you're that, a perfectionist. Because mm -hmm. if you are a perfectionist, you're not gonna you're gonna you're gonna like second guess yourself, you're not you gonna deadlines, meet deadlines yeah. and that's yeah, I think I mean they said it best in Bakuman, but serialization is the intersection between like quality and mm. speed. So uh you have to be able to to do to do both and make sure that you can put out good mm -hmm. content maybe it's not perfect content but it has to be good um to keep going uh at a consistent yeah speed okay 
Well, this is just out of sheer curiosity, Brandon. Um, who's your favorite writer, or yeah. or better yet, who are your influences? Oh man, my influences. I think like I'm a big fan of Chite Kubo's work, not as a writer, but as a world builder. I think he's like really good at world building, power system, art style, swag. swag. Definitely um, swag. His characters are his characters mm -hmm. are really cool. Um, I think he's an okay writer, but his his stuff is really cool. I think. Um, the writer for Death Note. Oh, I forget his name. Um, well, actually, the, the duo the for Death Note. Um, Oba, yeah, yeah. Oba, Oba mm -hmm. and Obata, the, the duo. <clears throat> uh, took me, yeah, Oba and Obata are really good as well. Um, I think, like, the re the writer in particular, I, I thought Planet Man was just okay, but, like, Death Note and Bakuman are both, like, two inherently, like, lo the log lines for those two series are so strong. It's, like, you immediately, mm -hmm. like, it's, like, it can go. It's Death so Note is good. So, the line it's is so, so unique. Good yeah. 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 And it's kind of like, you know, there's so many series out there that are so similar that it's always refreshing whenever you see something like Death Note, like Pokemon, that is just like a game yeah. changer yeah. and like yeah. not different. Uh, yeah. Very unique. Uh, that's, that's yeah. true. I would say, I would also say like one, one is a, one is, uh, one is one a great writer. One, one is a very good writer. Yeah. Yeah, he's really good with characters. Uh, it's like it's like interesting because it's like you have an overpowered character, and there's a lot of series out there that are kind of like a big issue in Korean manhwa is that the there's not they, they lack a lot of depth in the in the overpowered MC like series. Even in Sekai, a lot of them like lack the depth. Mm -hmm. But one manages to take that. He did it really just, well. Like, yeah, he did it really you know, well. Change mm -hmm. the game. Yeah. So third, and by the way, third, feel free to stop me anytime. I'm kind of just on a roll. No, 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 go ahead, go ahead. Wait, my question for, I have a question for Third and, and, and Didi, you guys. What, who are your, uh, who are your, your inspirations mm. here? You can go Give first, Didi, but for, we've said it, um, I think I've said it a bunch of times now, but since, since, since you know Brandon's what? asking. Uh -huh. okay. Yeah, I'm going to say because mine has sort of changed. I mean, it's the same, but Third knows, I've talked to Third about it. It used to be Yusuke Murata and it still is, it still is, um, but more now than ever, uh, yeah. more than Murata, it's uh tatsuki fujimoto not just not just because yeah he's, oh. he's, he's amazing but i've talked yeah he's exactly that's what i love about his stuff it's it's more so how the artwork makes me feel because a lot of people would say murata is like more skilled as an artist than fujimoto but for me fujimoto i still have him yeah. over murata now because so, something about his work that feels so authentic and i want my work to feel like that because i've always felt like my drawings and my art always felt a little you know stiff you know, it didn't feel like me. And what yeah. I what I really love about Fujimoto is like yeah. you can tell so much about the guy by his work, and I really like that. Yeah. How about you, sir? Who's your inspiration? Mm. To be honest, right now I don't really know. I just copy a bunch of random stuff on on Pinterest. But if I had, if I had to pick one artist, <laughs> right now, it's probably the old me because I was better. Oh come on, man. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I got worse. Is it K Rada, dude? I've seen so much K Rada. No, I, I was joking. It's, huh? it's Ichiro. It's Ichiro, though. I'm, I'm, Ichiro I'm Oda, okay. yeah. He, like his okay. his his design uh, and just the way he does expressions is just cool. Like especially the male yeah. characters, they are so diverse that oh, you yeah. can you know just pick one and you instantly know who that person is. Yeah, I can't say the same about the female characters mm. though. Okay, uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but writing, I'm sorry. That's 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 for art, uh, for drawing. Yeah, artwork. Yeah. For, for writing, I also like all this stuff, but it, I mm -hmm. mean, it's it's just a long ass series. Uh, so uh, so for writing, I would say one two, because mm -hmm. I I love Mob Psycho. I'm a huge fan of Mob Psycho, especially what happened in season two, bro. Mm -hmm. I I watch. I rewatched that so so many times. I love I love the way he develops his character. Just yeah, just not afraid to commit to his ideas. So yeah, that, that's actually a perfect segue for what I was about to ask Brandon next. Um, Brandon, we always do this for all our guests, so it is it is oh, custom. Yeah. Here. Yep, yep. You have to tell us your top five favorite anime or manga, or if you want, you could have two separate lists. So like a top five anime and a separate top five manga, you know, or you could just blend it into one one list of five. Oh man okay top five anime let me see i'm a big okay i'm a big uh let me see attack on titan oh, is number one for me seasons seasons oh, one yeah. through three 
Um, my favorite voice actor, Yuki mm-hmm. Kaji, is in it. Done by Studio Wit. Uh, great story, great mm-hmm. animation. It's here, Yuki Sawano on the music. Oh, yeah. Can't go wrong. Um, I really liked Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. Good so that's a pretty basic number two. Um, <laughs> controversial number three is a uh, Soul Eater. Oh, okay, that's not that, that's not that bad. It's I, unique. Actually, I actually I actually like the manga better than the anime, but the Soul Eater anime animation, uh, for its time, like early, like I think it was like two thousand seven, two thousand eight, was yeah. amazing. It was so good. Studio Bones is going crazy. So I was like, yeah. wow. And also the concept is just different. Mm-hmm. It's like you a whole series around like Halloween characters. They're eating soul. Very different. Feels very cool. Um, so I'll put Soul Eater. What do you think about three. Fire Force? Uh, I didn't actually get too deep into mm-hmm. it. I'll be honest with you. I thought the animation looks really good, mm-hmm. but I couldn't. I don't know why. Did you read the manga? I I I, oh. I didn't. I didn't. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I actually don't. Surprisingly, I don't watch an enormous amount of anime. Mm-hmm. Guys. I don't. I, I actually. <laughs> I actually read a lot. I read uh-huh. a lot of manga, and I'll watch anime if it's yeah. like like this season. I'll watch Chainsaw Man. But I already exactly. read it. I'll watch Bleach. I already read it. It's like I, I'm, I'll watch Blue Lock. But I've already read it. Like it's like these ones. It's like a lot of the stuff I've already read. So I'm like, oh, well, I watch the watch anime. Watch anime takes a lot of but, time. Yeah, um, it does. It does. I'm only watching for the pretty people and the voices and the animation, yeah. honestly. So what's it for? Ah, oh, I guess like I don't know because Bleach was. Bleach is such a big inspiration. I don't think it's like objectively like a good, like mm-hmm. the top like dog for That's animation. Fine. Yeah, again, it's your, it's your, uh, this is your top five, it, so it, you don't have to be very objective. Yeah, I'll put like I'll, I'll put it Bleach because it's just mm-hmm. like I love it. Are we putting movies in yeah, there right now? As long as like, an anime should be or a manga, it's always an anime. Yeah. Oh, I should have put it Spirit Away then. Oh, Sinta Chihiro. That's Hero. like a big. Don't go wrong hey. with that. Yes. Yeah. Spirit Away was, was yeah. massive for Brandon, me. fun Huge. fact. Last week, um, I went to the concert of Joe Hisaishi. Last concert in France. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. really? With Hattie Sawyer. Yeah. Jeez. Yeah. It's the best. I wish best I went. It, it was in New York and I was mm-hmm. like, God. Oh, yeah. Oh, sorry, right. go ahead. I cut you off. Yeah, I think that's fine. No, right? it's all good. Spirit um, Away is number five. Yeah. All right. <laughs> yeah. Damn. Okay. Manga? Oh, yeah. I'm oh man. I'm going to hear this one. What is... I have I have the Bakuman like entire Bakuman big mm-hmm. inspiration. I have the Bakuman vo- the full volume like all the, the every man, single the manga volume. Is so so good. I think that's oh, pretty. Oh god, the manga so. I think that's pretty mm-hmm. good. I have Berserk up there as well. I think Berserk was really good. I don't know how it's gonna. It's not. I don't know if it's gonna end or whatever they're doing with that. I think that was just a crazy series that was just mm-hmm. insane. Interestingly enough. Oh man, I don't know if Chainsaw Man is up there. I think Chainsaw Man was like just something so yeah. different that felt very different and like kind of crazy. Um, I thought the so like it was interesting that you said he was your favorite artist because I think from a visionary standpoint, he's my he's the best uh, right now. I think I struggle though with some of his action sequences. Like I think his his dynamic panels are a little yeah, confusing okay. to me. I agree, I agree just with me. that. I agree with that. You know, so it's like I'm just kind of like confused with some of the fights, and I'm like, okay, uh-huh. that's cool. But I think, like, from a visionary standpoint, he's really Do you good. think uh, Fujimoto is going to be one of the greatest of all time? Do you think? Oh, I've heard yeah, a lot for of people, sure. I've heard a lot I, think, of that. I, I think he I think he's already, I think he's, I think he's already yeah, there. I kinda, strongly agree he? that he's going to be... Because, like, he's he's got everything. Especially that visionary aspect that carries him a lot. Yeah. Yeah. But sorry to cut you off. Keep going. Keep going. Yeah. I really like Blue Lock, mm. too. Oh, man. Blue Lock. Okay. Blue Lock is just so... Fun facts. Blue Lock was one of the inspirations for God Game. Really? Like, it was like, it was God Game is literally just Blue Lock. And no one notices I, this for some reason, but it's I literally the same I did not know thing. that. <laughs> because it's like the same thing. It's literally like Death Game, like yeah. Death Game, like Kid is Omniscient, and like, uh, that's literally the plot, him. right? So I was like, <laughs> yeah, it's like something inside of me is like, he's Omniscient. Like, the only difference is like, they're not like all like yeah. dickheads, right? I think Blue Lock is, Blue Lock has like crazy paneling. It has crazy dynamic panels. Um, it's an innovative way to combine death games with sports, and uh, everyone's just a big <laughs> dickhead, and it's awesome like to see it. It's kind of mm-hmm. like funny. Um, it is kind of repetitive though, right? Like it's kind of repetitive. So I'm like, oh, like the beginning was really good, and then it kind of got like, mm-hmm. okay, man, man. I don't know, monster oh. maybe monster. Oh, that's really good. good. Oh, I that's have good. to yeah. read monster. that. Urosawa. 
Monster or 20th Century Boys is probably Urusawa. there. Um, I'll pick one. I'll pick one of those two because that's Urasawa. Um, I did used to like Akira a lot, but I think, uh, yeah, it's just yeah, Akira is also really good. I'm just like looking at my manga collection. <laughs> no <right> problem. Now, <laughs> like, <laughs> what is the what is the mm -hmm. one? You know, but yeah, I would say. I mean, that's like probably yeah, that's that's a there, solid five right yeah, there. I mean, I would that's say solid. That's really solid. So, did you have anything? I want to ask just a few more questions before we jump into like the questions from the audience. Uh, go ahead, bro. Really Don't go worry, ahead. Just okay. Finish all that questions. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. Um. All right, Brandon. Uh, just to, just for the people listening, can you talk about what you're currently working on right now? You've probably said a <laughs> bunch of them. Oh the man, this is. Yes, I want all oh of them, God. Brandon. All of them, and if you want all of them, all and of if them. you want, tell us what's upcoming. Something that you can say, of course. Don't say stuff that you can't say. What's upcoming? Because I like. I'm always looking forward to when Brandon's going to announce something because usually. It's kind of Chen writing, of yeah. course, but I always like personally when it comes to your stuff, I always like to see who you pair up with art wise because you have a way. I don't know if you're doing it on purpose, mm. but the artist you pick is always perfect for that story. So, for example, um, Inu, Inu and yeah. um, Just a Goblin, that is just like visually, yeah. come on, it, it fits. So, tell us about everything you're currently working yeah. on and what could come in the future. Yeah, I think so. Right now, Just a Goblin starts serializing Webtoon mm -hmm. weekly. Um, so that's a Webtoon original. So that's serializing. Um, I'm doing this series called Kinfire First Expedition with the cre ex executive producer of Arcane wow. League of Legends. Oh, um, so she, she, it's her IP. So I'm doing it kind of like for her intellectual property. There's, they're a board game that's uh, doing also uh, a Webtoon series. All right, it's, so that's already out. Wow. It's on Canvas. You can read it. Um, with my friend Shinilis, really mm -hmm. talented artist. She's she, she's a pro mangaka from games uh, and also just like insane work ethic. Um, uh, God game obviously mm -hmm. is ongoing. Um, God game's ongoing. We got the Mad Gate. We're fighting for mm -hmm. season two. Oh, um, that's Kuzumari. with yeah, me and yeah, Kuzumari. Yeah, cool. Kuzumari, we're getting we're trying to go for season mm -hmm. dose. Um, we got Bandit King with voice me as well. Um, <clears throat> what else? I got Samurai no Tora coming out in December. Still going, man. That's crazy. Um, so much to get named. I got... Yeah, I, yeah, I, I got Somnia. Oh, with, when is Somnia yeah. dropping? I'm looking for... I think you said summer or something. It's, I don't know. The volume's, done, the volume's pretty mm -hmm. much done. I just, like, have to decide when I want to mm -hmm. press publish. You know, so it's, like, mm -hmm. it's pretty done. What else? I mean, like, I think that might be the things I can mm -hmm. announce right now. That was a lot. There might yeah i think i think there's other things mm -hmm. but i I'll, I'll just leave it i'll leave it there right now that's my main thing oh i've done like some atomic games which is interesting a very interesting mm -hmm. off off brand uh brandon thing that i do which is like i make these type of uh like meme like uh visual novel okay. games oh, for fun uh for in collaboration with a publisher man. which is uh called dorian it's that pretty interesting sounds, that sounds cool uh man Ah, uh, okay. I, I promise we'll get to the questions. <laughs> I promise. Oh, go ahead. You're all good. Um, You're all good. So, Brandon, kind of talk about what is your your goal? You know, I mean, maybe you don't have to have like an end goal. That's kind of like a question. But like, yeah, in general, as, what is like? However, you interpret interpret it. What is your goal as an as a writer or as a creator? Yeah, I mean, I have a short term mm -hmm. goal. So my short term goal is by the time I'm 30, that I have like an anime adaptation like announced for one of my intellectual properties. So uh, it's an IP that I own. So like just a goblin, God game, like what, what any of those series. Uh, You're just 25. That's, I think it's possible too. I'm yeah. 25. Got yeah, five fine. years. Last two, three years have been insane mm -hmm. momentum. I think oh, yeah. it's possible. Um, so by the time I think, uh, long term, right, I don't want to do like 20, 30 series at a time. Like that's kind of oh, yeah. too much work. I do want to do like that Oda route, which is like you mm. focus on one series and you just focus and, and that's the one, um, <clears throat> maybe not one. I think I'd get bored. maybe like two <laughs> okay. or three, two or three. Yeah. <laughs> because mm -hmm. I'm not drawing, you know, it's like, I'm not drawing. So it's not like, it's not like Oda where mm -hmm. he's doing it all right. It's like, uh, or he's doing yeah. it all with assistance. Like, yeah, yeah. If I'm not, just like, not drawing then you visionary can and like, yeah, like that's true. Yeah. I actually do want to start a podcast. Actually, Dude, you should go for point. it. Um, oh my, you should go for, for it. Yeah. For like professionals in the manga or webtoon anime mm -hmm. space. They've been thinking about that. Um, and then also I want to start like a, eventually one day putting this energy out into the world is like, I want to start a studio. Mm. Ambitious. Um, 
not for my intellectual mm -hmm. property, yeah. but like a studio that will be like, because all these people come to me with client mm -hmm. projects, like IPs that they own. Um, something where I can like kind of lead the production. I won't be the one writing or creating yeah. this thing, but like using my expertise to help uh, other people's dreams of making their bringing their bring their series to like another media, a newer mm -hmm. Eastern medium, right? Like uh, a lot of people in the U.S. don't have that either. in the U.S. or internationally, I guess, like mm -hmm. outside Japan and France, because France and Japan are going crazy. You guys got got yeah. talented people there. The U.S. is still starting to build up that talent, which I think is is awesome. I'm excited to see where, uh, um, but uh, where, you know where it's going to be at. <laughs> yeah, where it is in a couple of years. Yeah, I think. Uh, but yeah, there's a lot of people who want to bring their IPs to like webtoon and manga, and I I, I can do that mm -hmm. right now. But uh, I think at a larger scale, I'm in yeah. the studio. You so. Sound like a very ambitious <laughs> guy. That's very exciting to hear those things. I I believe you can do it. You have the work yeah. ethic. I think it's very possible. Um. So yeah, uh, I'm ready to move on to questions. There's one more, you know ending question that i want to ask brandon but i think we should do that right before we you know, end the episode sure. so third you want to you want to lead us with sure. some questions sir uh well i sent i just sent you uh some screenshot screenshot for the question oh, yeah, it, 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 uh, yeah don't have mm -hmm. a lot of questions but i mm -hmm. guess it's enough um yeah we don't know we don't, we don't want to take too much time anyways let's take a couple questions let's see if there's any good ones yeah i have I, like the first one i saw was um from mr octopus co brandon they ask how do you write an interesting system? Oh, uh, that's a good question. I think um, I think it depends. You know, you have a lot of different power systems. So there's like the what is it called? I don't know what they call it, but there's the power system that's kind of like Lord of the Rings and mm -hmm. Harry Potter. Or actually, Harry Potter is not it. Lord of the mm -hmm. Rings. Let's say Lord of the Rings. Magic. What is magic in Lord of the Rings? Like none of us have any idea. It's just kind of like this mysterious, omnipotent thing that people can cast. I think that I, I don't think that's like a very fun power system to have in manga and mm -hmm. webtoons like Eastern stuff, because I feel like we like more rules. We like different ways they can use it. And it kind of feels cheap. Like mm -hmm. when Gandalf can uh, randomly use some random thing and just save everyone. Yeah. It makes no sense. Right. So that's one type of power system. I think there's another power system that's like very rule based oh, where it's like, yeah, very, sorry, like you're basically talking about soft and hard. Uh, yeah. Is that the term? Often Soft and know. hard, yeah, mm -hmm. that's what they call them. Yeah, Brandon Sanderson yeah, yeah. probably said that. I think that I saw mm -hmm. a video on it. But yeah, it's like, you know, you have the hard power systems, which are just like very mm -hmm. defined. Like, th these are the rules. Like, I'm, I'm it's I'm Hunter Hunter. We got Nan. Hunter. It's, it's yeah. crazy. Like, everything can be explained. And then there's some in between, um, which uh, there's like, uh, there's a power system in place. But um, you can kind of manipulate like Jujutsu it and, and, and change Jujutsu it. Kaisen. Yeah, <laughs> Jujutsu Kaisen, that type of stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I, I'm more interested in the type of power system that's similar mm -hmm. to Bleach, um, which is like um, people have powers powers that are unique mm -hmm. to themselves. Um, I like power systems like that because you can have an infinite amount mm -hmm. of powers that you do, and, and the ideas are. Uh, are kind of limitless and then when you create the power you can also manipulate them to create new interesting uh situations yeah. right funny how you do that um, in god so game. like in yeah. god game <laughs> yeah in god game it's like you would give someone mm -hmm. a power right like um you give someone a power and then they can uh for god game they have like a specific like divine power that's like tied to themselves that like these gods yeah. will give to them because they're sponsoring them, awesome. right? And so someone can definitely have an infinite amount of powers, which is cool, but also they can have like mm -hmm. less powers, but like just know how to use them yeah, like, yeah. better. So the question, how do you write <laughs> an interesting power system? I would say like, honestly, like there's no right or wrong answer, but the best way to do it is like you stay consistent. You create something with, in manga and webtoons, you want to create something with some kind of like basis mm -hmm. for rules. So like, you know, like, uh, yeah, like bleach or whatever, like, you know, some kind of basis or rules. But I think it's also interesting to like, keep it open. Cause like, Nen is super hard. Like some writing something like Hunter Hunter, I don't think anyone, most oh, yeah. people cannot do that. And it's like, that's very hard because like, you also have to remember those rules, mm -hmm. right? Cause if you contradict any of the crazy rules that you've created for yourself, then you're a bad, then it's mm -hmm. a bad writer, right? That's true. Um, so if you kind of mm -hmm. keep it open and flexible, it's, it's, less likely that you're going to make a mistake in your own series um so i would i would say like that's probably like the mm -hmm. easiest thing 
There's also a good power. I mean, even I was just about to ask Bender, that. Um, really... Brent, so you mentioned you like yeah. power systems where everybody's kind of like they have like their own unique thing. I wanted to know what makes like, for example, Avatar so good. Where it's just like this is there's only four powers that everybody can have, and eventually they introduce the variants or whatever. How is that so good? Can you break that down really quick? personally for yeah. me because I want to learn? Why is it so good? Yeah, the, what makes at the end of the day, the only thing that makes power systems like good is how they use oh, the yeah. powers, mm -hmm. right? It can be the simplest thing in the world as long as there's some kind mm -hmm. of rule. Like, all right, I can use fire. I can use fire as much as I want. But all the only thing that matters in the series is how do I execute the power system in the actual series that makes it interesting. So how do I use how do I use airbending in a way that's interesting and innovative in every single fight, right? Like, oh, I can use it to like bend the air around someone's face and they can't breathe and I suck mm. the soul out of them. Like that was like one thing yeah. they did, right? Oh, I can like use water bending to like freeze ice and like surf on it and go crazy, right? It's like that air, like that was so cool. Like the different ways that they can use this very flexible, um, flexible, uh, what's it called? Power system, right? And then like, I don't know, like, uh, I don't know, like uh, Bleach, does it sometimes like they have like different ways that they use their their bankai their new and innovative mm -hmm. um Jujutsu Kaisen I don't know if Jujutsu Kaisen honestly thrives not I, it's a good power mm -hmm. system but uh, I would say it thrives more on its dynamic like they're like mostly fist fighting yeah, and each other, you know I mean? like, is, yeah I still don't <laughs> to be honest with you I, I don't understand the power system <laughs> It's kind of like it's kind of like Bleach, except like they most. It's more based on like mm -hmm. martial arts and like them beating the crap out of each other than like the actual power yeah, system yeah. itself. Um, I think yeah. I mean, I would say like even Naruto uh, at the beginning, its power system yeah. is really cool because you're using like ninjutsu, taijutsu, genjutsu, and like they're using it in innovative ways. Like the clones, a substitution. Now it becomes like Dragon Ball Z. It's kind of yeah. different, but like at the time, it was like. You know, is are they going to use substitute? They're going to big. They're going to outsmart mm -hmm. each other because they're all using like different ways to different abilities and stuff like that. So I think like the beginning of Naruto had a really I good agree. power system as well. Mm -hmm. um, it was more it was more tit for tat yeah. type action. It was like strategy. What is he going to do? I'm going to react. Now it's just like I make monster. I make bigger monster. I like to just fight. That's, that's pretty much what it is. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, it's like wait, why does Naruto not just like throw a beaju mm -hmm. bomb at them? Yeah. Instead, he like goes up close up and first. Yeah, he starts, starts punching. punching just end the like, fight oh, really okay. quick. Just go really big and just just destroy. Him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's yeah. So uh, Terry, did you have another question lined up? Because I'm about to. I'm oh about yeah, to for ask sure. One. You have one uh, lined up? Yeah, I have one lined up. Wait, uh, I okay. think I lost it, but oh yeah. No, let me. Uh, let me... Oh shit! Go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, okay, okay, fine. I was going to ask, don't forget the question. I was going to ask Brandon. Somebody says, this person, immaculate.art05, asks, uh, I'm trying to build a world with a history that can play into the plot. Tips, question mark? You get that? Yeah. History that can play into the plot. Um, play into the plot. I would say, um, I mean, it really de it really depends. I guess like if you're doing a lot of world building, like the history is inherently the world yeah. that you're doing. So like it kind of like it'll define the architecture. It'll define how people act. So you kind of need to have yeah, the history. Yeah, if you're yeah, building a world yeah. from scratch, you need to know the history. If it's like all right, the we're we're in like 1970s New York, you need to know the history of 1970s New York, right? Like so, I think like history. It's going to inform visually what's going on. It's going to inform the characters, what they've gone through, what they're doing, what their experiences are. Um, so that's those are some ways to, to, to do it directly. If you're trying to be like, oh, this is what's something that happens in the past, um, try and avoid info dumping. But, you know, if you have to, it's more acceptable in manga than it is in like yeah. novels and stuff. But, you know, you could you could explain it directly, like through mm -hmm. narration. Um, there could be exchanges in dialogue where they're talking about things that have happened. Just make sure it's not stilted mm -hmm. and too forced. Like if two characters are in 1970s and they're like, oh, like one of them is explaining what ha what 1970s is to the other guy who also lives in 1970. Mm -hmm. doesn't make any sense because they both live there and they mm -hmm. both know what's what's happening. Mm -hmm. Right. So um, I think that like making it seamless is the, is the biggest thing. But yeah, I mean, I think it's tough because um, it's tough because if you're uh, this is for serialization mm -hmm. but you know i would say like don't get too caught up in the details as an early writer if you can if you spend uh, i think a lot of writers and i say this all the time if you spend too much time like 
uh, trying to build your worlds before you actually start writing mm -hmm. the thing, way harder, right? It's way harder to be like, all right, this is the world. I'm gonna tailor the story to this world. No, write the story, you know the general mm -hmm. world. All right, like something historical happened, like I'm gonna tailor that to work to my story, right? Um, Cause like you can build an entire world out there, but the reader is only gonna see like a fraction of it. So like why build like way mm -hmm. too much, you know? Don't spend too much time on it because a lot of people won't even write it, won't even write mm -hmm. or finish their story. So I, I would focus more on like actually finishing your story. Like even Harry Potter, right? Mm -hmm. Massive world, massive world. I don't actually know what's outside of Hogwarts, TBH, <laughs> like yeah. what's going on outside of Hogwarts. Yeah. I don't know. Like they're making a game to try and like address that. I'm mm -hmm. like, okay, cool. But like, that's yeah, true. that's true. It's funny. Um, would you say Attack on Titan did that really well with like, you know, how Ymir and everything played into what happened? I don't know if you caught up on Attack on Titan. Yeah, I think Attack on Titan is good world building, but mm -hmm. it's like, it was like very slow. You know what I mean? Like, it's not, it's like, Basically, Isayama, I'm sure he knew what was going to happen, like, generally, like, throughout the entire yeah. time he wrote it from the beginning, right? Um, but, like, you know, I would say, like, he wasn't, like, sprinkling out, like, what's on the other side of the ocean in the what's first, the like, way? couple of chapters, mm -hmm. right? There, it was, there was no need, because it's, like, there's too much yeah. going on there, right? It's like, all right, we start off inside mm -hmm. of a wall all right we're inside of a wall okay now we're going outside of the wall okay now we're going across yeah, yeah. the ocean it's like very slow progression of the world that is being sprinkled mm -hmm. in so um and over and that happened over many years like i don't know like so many years of serialization so i would say like you know like you don't need to you know yeah. the worlds didn't um, but you have didn't, so much time to develop it didn't so attack on titan first serialize yeah. uh then i think it was published in 2008 right yeah. So long. Yeah, so long. Way before it was published, I think. Uh, like in yeah, yeah, and <laughs> yeah, so it's yeah, more yeah, than yeah, long, ten uh, years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, so you have so much time to build your worlds. Um, I would say, like, yeah, just like kind of get into the writing. Uh, focus on on trying to get get started. For a lot of intro writers, I don't think Isayama was like a was like a. Well, he's not a typical writer. He's mm -hmm. a big planner, but also he's not like. It's not also not probably not his first road the first time ever writing something mm -hmm. ever you know i don't know yeah that's good that's that's solid advice right there uh third you want to ask the last question uh yes uh, I, I i changed the question actually uh, i'm gonna make this more uh chill last answer it's from mm -hmm. x hot keys they ask what do you enjoy most about writing um what do i enjoy most about writing i think I don't know. It's kind of like uh, when I used to play action figures as a kid, you're playing out a scenario mm -hmm. and it just like, I don't really know what's going to happen usually. It's like, I don't know how I'm going to write this out, but at the end of this writing session, I'm going to have something that I created that is a scene or chapter that is just, mm -hmm. you know, it came from my brain and it's something I never knew. And, and I, I, here's the thing, the biggest thing, you write what you usually, you know, if you're not a sellout, <laughs> you write what you want to read. You write what you want to read. So I'm writing something that I would personally yeah. enjoy. So I'm like, wow, this is cool. So it's a fun thing to do. And I get to work with cool artists like Third and another in Kuzo and Mare and all these other people and make it bring it to life. Yeah. And it's like, I think the coolest, the cool part is when you see other people doing takes on your oh, work, yeah. you know, fan art sure. or Third, or Third, like just like bringing like my shitty <laughs> script to like uh -huh. turn into something uh, that's stop, like crazy. Stop. I always, like, I always say the, the opposite thing. Because for me, the art, the, the, really? the, the way I draw God game is not as um, well done as oh, man, dude, the, it'll... the writing. I don't even know what to say. I mean, I'll, I'll be like, yo, medium shot front <laughs> view of character A punching character B. And then and then third will draw like 2,000 lines of this guy blasting a fist into someone else's face. And I'm like... <laughs> You know, like it's just it's just different. Like this rose out here, like you know, making crazy shit come to life. Mm -hmm. I wrote like, yeah, I wrote this like you know, the sentence of this vision, and it's like yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Must be, it must be a like, cool but, feeling yeah. just seeing that. Yeah, I was gonna ask uh, third. I was gonna answer that question myself and ask third, but I. I have the exact same answer as you you know i write stories uh that i would personally want to read and when you finally finish that last page or the last panel and you go back and you look at it it's just like just that immense dopamine just rushing through your body just know that oh wow i finished this 
this is the thing now and it came from my head and it's something that hopefully if you're not a seller like you mentioned that you you yourself personally want to read and i think personally that's what i like about writing and telling stories and you know drawing and all that third i i don't know if you have a different answer from that but what about you what do you like most about writing in the very little writing that you have done of course well i I, I guess it's the same for me because I always write what I would want to see in a manga. Um, mm -hmm. So, like, there's a story that I I had in mind, which is, which is kind of fucked up, but that's what I want to see, you know. <laughs> and yeah, I like those plot twists, kind of um, mm -hmm. horror type of um, story in the end, like Junji Ito uh, mm -hmm. type of story. Mm. Yeah, kind of like mm -hmm. this. It's it's yeah, it's the same answer, but just uh, yeah, mm -hmm. different. It's just a different genre horror. Not, I like horror. Not, there's nothing wrong with that. I can't say I disagree with anything you said. But um, any last final thoughts, gentlemen, before I ask Brandon this very last question that would just segue into the end of the episode? Anything? You want to? Anyone want to say anything? Uh, no, no, I'm good. <laughs> okay. All I'm right. This too. has been. A very educational episode that I really, really like. I know Third likes the more chill type episodes, and those are good. Those are good. But when you have someone like Brandon on, you know, you gotta, you gotta. People want to learn. I want to learn. I know the audience want to learn as well. Um, oh, one last thing I want to say. It's not really a question. It's just a comment. I saw you, Brandon. You tweeted. Yeah. You tweeted. I don't know what the event oh. was. What was happening? But you were like on a panel or something with a bunch of people, and I noticed you were with. You were sitting next to what's her name, Felicia Day. Right? Am I? Am I? Am I right? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. I just yeah. want to say that's wild. Yeah, we that's were. Wild, uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't even know really? who she was. Yeah, yeah who's who's Felicia? Really? I, okay, I'm a. I, yeah, I used to watch Supernatural, and she was in there all the time. I loved her character, and um, she's also in the that God of War yeah. trailer that came out. And she did something for God of War. Yeah, yeah, she, she yeah, she, oh, she, really? she got it. She got it. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, she apparently she she yeah she was like a big deal. I was like, oh my god, like, it's good. I didn't, I didn't want to look up anyone that was like on this. It was we were, we were literally flown mm -hmm. out to LA to play a board game. It was a board game. We were playing a board game. It was the board game Kinfire, the one that I told you about the yeah, yeah. series. Um, so yeah, we were just like being recorded playing a board game, and it was just like me, her, uh, Dave B. Walters, and my friend mm -hmm. Angela, who's a, um, a Twitch streamer. And we were just uh, we were just playing playing games on and with all these cameras mm -hmm. pointing at us. It was pretty mm -hmm. fun, and uh, yeah, I mean, I didn't want to Google Google them because I was like, okay, that was just yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's a good idea. <laughs> so I was like, just go go mm -hmm. in blinds, hang out, have a good time, mm -hmm. have some drinks after, uh, and I'm in LA. So I had a good time. It was chill. So uh, man, you're living yeah. that life. Kid. I mean, I may one nice. day, you know, I kind of I kind of like the idea of it. Of like, you know, just. I want to live more life and travel and do more, but in the moment, it probably be a little, you know, hard and stuff like that. But you're actually doing it, man. You're traveling around. You're going on YouTube Dude, panels, whatever. Same. I want to meet so many people, like yeah, especially in the people. US. Yeah, yeah. So that's crazy. You do all that. And did you, did you ever see yourself doing this, like getting to this far? Like I don't know. I have a lot of confidence mm -hmm. in myself and my ability to tell stories. I don't think I was anticipating doing it like so soon. Um. Yeah, but like I said, like, you know, I, I don't know. I don't think too much about like the, I don't stress out about the future. I don't think about that stuff too much. All I know is that like, I have faith and I trust myself mm -hmm. and if you, I, I hopefully yeah, yeah. you guys do too, but like, you know, if you have confidence mm -hmm. in yourself and your abilities and your, mm -hmm. and your strengths, and if you trust yourself that you are yeah. a hard worker, like everything's going to end up like in a, in a good, in a good way in the future. And that's yeah. all I can say. Um, so yeah, that's usually well, how I think just my resonated with me so much because I am the exact same way. <laughs> like if I tell people, if I tell people awesome. the things that I'm going to, that I sort of like, you know, that confidence you mentioned that I know I'm going to do because just because I'm working towards it right now, they'll think I'm crazy, but I'm not going to say it. I'm just going to do it. And when I get there, I'll tell you, okay, this, I was working for this the entire time and I wasn't panicking because I knew it was going to happen. <laughs> it's like every milestone that I've, that I've already like right. surpassed, I kind of saw myself like hitting those milestones. It's just always usually like, I might get surprised of how soon it happened, you know? Oh, it, wow. It was this fast. But yeah. I do have that self-confidence and I do hope that whoever is listening, like has that type of that confidence in themselves as well. Cause I think that's really important. Yeah. Can't wait. Can't wait to have that. Yeah. Yeah. And obviously. <laughs> 
Yeah, and obviously be thankful for you know we're all thankful for every opportunity that's and everything true, that true, comes. True. But yeah, of course it's like it's also it's also like it's like this balance. It's like oh I know this mm -hmm. is gonna happen. I know I'm gonna do X things. I'm gonna do great mm -hmm. things. Um, and obviously I'm I'm happy at every fantastic moment that happens along yeah, that of journey. Course, of course. So that's true. Yeah. So uh, last question for you, Brandon. Um, okay, so yeah. if there was an aspiring writer out there that's listening to this there's definitely a lot of writers listening to this <clears throat> then they want to do what you yeah. do and look they want to do what you do yeah what advice would you give to them that's the last question um i would say first off like social media is your best friend i would say like there's been no easier way than to reach people mm -hmm. like you can cut out the middleman oh, yeah. entirely and reach people by posting your content mm -hmm. online so I would say like the first thing you want to do is make something. So it can mm -hmm. be a one shot, can be manga. If you want to pair up with an artist, there's lots of artists out there looking mm -hmm. for partners. Lots of artists that are also looking out there to do their mm -hmm. first work. Um, there's lots of other writers that are open to collaborating. Um, the hardest part obviously is finding the right match between artists because there's a lot of good artists and they might match up with a bad writer there's a lot of good writers that might match up with an artist that's not quite ready for serialization etc you know it's like uh it's the, finding the right the right match but when you find your partner create something make something and when you make that mm -hmm. thing just put it out there into the world and uh and uh be be consistent and relentless and just start putting stuff out into the internet and then i think like you know if the right mm -hmm. people see it um you'll get an opportunity and then you kind of use those opportunities yeah. to scale. Um, so that's my wow. take. Yeah. I couldn't have said it better <laughs> myself. That was a perfect way to end the episode. Third, is there anything you want to say? <laughs> no, you don't have to ask that every time. Yeah. I just, okay. I want to make sure I want, I want to make sure that you don't like, I don't know that we're not over talking or anything. Cause I, I'm a, I talk a lot. Um, no, for sure. I, I the, the only, the only thing that I hate about myself is when we do this type of um, podcast slash interview, is that mm -hmm. I don't know, I don't really know what to say about it. I'm better at continuing a conversation instead of continuing off um, mm -hmm. a answer. So, yeah, yeah sorry about that. Yeah, no, 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 don't apologize, man. It's fine. It's fine. Um, so, yeah, with that said, I think we're going to call this episode over. I think that's that's a good way to end it. And yeah, Brandon, thank you for coming on to the podcast. I appreciate it. I'm a fan of your work and I look forward to everything that you're going to do in the future. I know you do great things. Um, but yeah, awesome. yeah, thank no you. problem. But yeah, thank you everyone. Till next time, it has been I, Diddy Mark, and Third PHP, and Brandon Chen. You have a good day or night or wherever you are. Goodbye. Bye. Bye.